No one, least of all me, pretends that Scotland is somehow immune from racism. We are not. But the message that we as leaders must send is this one. Scotland is an open country. We are a welcoming country. We want people to come to Scotland and we want people to stay in Scotland. That's so progressive of you. Helmet head back at it again with yet another shambolic attempt to pander. And this time she really outdone herself with some of the things that she says. It really is a never-ending occurrence for this embarrassment to do nothing but spew out shit that really doesn't sit well with me at times. I know, I know most of it is just the generic, progressive, far-left pondering that all these politicians do on a daily basis whenever they get the chance. But some of the things that she says in her double standards are really starting to wear thin because I'm not entirely sure if she's aware that they're double standards and she just doesn't seem to care because her far-lefty politics... And her, you know, her tainted way of looking at the world has made her seem wishy with what she does. Or, or, or am I missing the point here? Or is she missing the point, I should say. So, she goes on to say, Diversity is not a weakness, it's a strength to be celebrated. And we're determined to do that, are we, I? <laughs> she warned any form of Brexit would harm living standards and risk jobs, calling on the UK government to use the extension to October the 31st to drop its damaging red lines and talk with all parties and devolved governments in the future relationship with Europe. We've already been through this, everybody's been through it a multitude of times before. The EU are not going to accept any withdrawal agreement bar the one that's already on the table. Second of all, all of last year, Sturgeon went on a campaign of crying a little heart out because... Theresa May apparently was declining all of her attempts to try and compromise to have some form of soft namby pamby Brexit while the UK had their so called hard Brexit. You know? So we got to stay in single market customs union while the rest of the UK uh, exited. And she complained for the longest time and used that as a campaign strategy to try and conjure up some more sympathy votes. And here we are a year later and she's now trying to tell you that even in the event of that form of Brexit, that would have been damaging. That would have been <laughs> harmful for standards of living and risking jobs, etc, etc. So she's using the same spiel that she uses to refer to a no-deal Brexit, but she's now referring to a soft deal or, a, you know, a soft variant with the same rhetoric, the same wording. <laughs> One does have to wonder if there really is any sincerity in what she claims. Anyway, she also called for a second referendum and any deal reached. But yet, people genuinely think that independence is looming. Really? Is it? Because if it is, I don't understand why she's doing everything in her power to completely avoid that mandate. It's a very strange set of events for a so-called nationalist to find herself in. She should be loving what's happening right now. So why has she made it her mission to... Make sure the UK stays in the EU. What? What is it to her? Why the fuck should this be any of her concern? It's unknown to me. But anyway, Sturgeon says, My hope, although this is no way guaranteed, is that in a second referendum, the UK as a whole would opt to remain. There are many reasons I hope for that. One of them is that any form of Brexit, no matter how soft it might be, will have damaging consequences. But yet that soft Brexit last year, you would have been fine with in terms of compromising. Sharp memory helmet here, eh? The consequences can be mitigated, but not prevented completely. And we've only got your word for that, because let's not beat her in the bush. Remember, we all had the referendum. We saw the result. Crybaby politicians like Sturgeon and Caroline Lucas and uh, a couple others. I can't really remember the names off the top of my head just now. Nonetheless, they immediately hijacked the narrative and it became soft and hard Brexit. That became repeated so many times that it actually became par for the course with the narrative. And then we moved to a no deal or leaving with a deal scenario. We had to, the whole reason that it was being held up and talks were stalling so on and so forth was because they really couldn't come to a deal. The narrative became that we couldn't leave until a deal was met. That wasn't on the ballot paper. But it was said so many times uh, on and off by commentators and politicians alike, including Sturgeon, that it became par for the course. And now you fast forward to where we are now, and a no-deal Brexit very bad, and a soft Brexit is very bad, and it's been said so many times, repeatedly, by politicians like Crybaby Sturgeon, and it's becoming par for the course, and everybody seems to just accept it as fact. Well, I don't, because, as I've said multiple times before, 
These politicians were crying and whining the day after the referendum happened. And the only difference between then and now is the fact that Theresa May has completely capitulated the whole situation. So if we were on course for a very good type of Brexit deal, <laughs> these people would still be complaining, but they would, they would just look like sore losers. Now they look like people that have got your best interests at heart. Funny that's. There are many reasons I hope. One of them is that any form of Brexit... Oh, sorry, I've read that. The consequences can be mitigated, but not prevented completely. And then she goes on to say, <laughs> there will be nothing disorderly about Scottish independence when it happens. When it happens! But of course, revoking Article 50 means it won't happen. Unless they've got some magic trick up their sleeve that nobody's seen coming. But it doesn't seem to me, or anybody else for that matter, that isn't up her ass. She doesn't really care about independence because it's not been mentioned at all, really. And even there, it gets a mention at the bottom. All she talks about is revoking Article 50. She wants the UK to stay in the EU. Now, for somebody that had independence up her sleeve, why the fuck does any of this matter? None of it should. And anyway, it's not just her latest plight to get us all to stay in the European Union. This, uh, same speech. She also called on Scotland to address a number of issues, including the rise of the far right, the gender pay gap, and overall working conditions. Scotland wants no part in a despicable environment. We reject the dog whistle xenophobia. <laughs> and we stand firm and united against the rise of the far right. Oh, the pandering is ugh, insurmountable. I mean, it was only in the wake of Christchurch where it became pretty clear where her loyalties lay because silence whenever the yeah, Isajadi masterminds supposedly did what they did. But uh, when they're all the reversed in a country the other side of the world, Sturgeon comes out with a namby pamby progressive rhetoric, which is riddled with double standards. And this is where I start to take a bit of issue with her, regardless of if she's just saying it because it's par for the course or not. She made it clear her determination to tackle the far right. The fucking far right that's supposedly everywhere in society, but yet nowhere at the same time. A funny old thing. The First Minister said that Miss Arden was absolutely right when she said that nations around the world are now engaged in a global fight against the far right racist and extremist ideology. Oh, is that so? <laughs> oh, nothing cracks me up quite like Sturgeon's BS. That goes for all of these lefty politicians. You seem to be obsessed with this notion of the far right. Because in their intersectional utopia that they want to create, the big bad white man is the evil oppressor. So naturally, any big bad white man that doesn't go along with the status quo, it's status quo and basically castrates himself and becomes a progressive twat. They see them as a far right boogeyman. <laughs> anyway, I'm digressing. 